especially for my EPs on Charm, I've sort of got this format where I try and I try and make an EP sort of cover a lot of ground musically. So it's still generally all four four. I mean, a lot of the time on Charm, I'll have one track which is fully electronica, with you know, sort of not four four compatible at all. But this time around, they're all four four. But I still wanted to cover cover sort of ground and make it interesting and try and. Because I'm really interested in all different styles of music, I love lots of different things, and I wanna—I don't want to just make one type of music and sort of keep doing the same thing. I want to always challenge the people that like my music. I want them to be a bit challenged. I want to put music, release music that some people that love my music won't like it. I'll release something and they'll be like, "Oh, this is crap," you know. I want that. I want—I want to sort of push people a little bit so that people don't get too. Because that gives me creative freedom, basically. A lot of acts release every track they release is really similar and they, they sort of can be really successful because of that because people know what to expect and then when they release something new everyone buys it because they're like oh it's another track like this I, I like that but at the same time if they want to sort of experiment artistically then they're, they're a bit stuck because if they, if they go okay I'm going to do a completely electronic track or a modern classical or whatever they want to do something different then if they release that all their fans aren't going to like it because they're so used to having the same thing so my sort of approach to it has always been to try and every, with every with each EP to try and have a quite a range of styles so that people are used to me doing different things and that gives me the freedom to actually experiment and not get stuck you know because that's the problem with a lot of music you know I mean, if you look at a lot of dance music genres the ones that last the least amount of time are the ones that have the most strict definitions as to what the, what makes attract that genre and then it basically means that producers end up stuck because they can't make something new because it has to tick all these boxes to fit into that genre. And I don't want to fall into that trap. So I don't like being labelled as a particular genre. I sort of, again, my music gets released in different genres and no one ever knows what genre to call it. Which I also, I like that as well because again, it gives me much more freedom to do different things and to keep changing, keep evolving and not get too stuck. So um, so yeah, I sort of went off point a bit there, didn't I? The last EP, so there was yeah, there was the there was the A side, which was sort of had a bit of old school techno flavor, like sort of live drums, and but then with the melodic sort of side, but quite straight sort of dance floor track. Then there was the the two B side tracks. One one was a really down tempo sort of glitchy sort of soft. You can hardly even play it in a club. It's more home listening, but it's just about club sort of you know functional and then one of them was a really noisy distorted glitchy thing which was definitely a club track and yeah a bit weird and noisy basically so there was a quite a range of yeah styles and then a great micro trauma remix which uh did yeah micro trauma are great you know the guys on charm two german guys who yeah they've come through in the last couple of years and they're just they're really consistent you know they're doing super high quality stuff and yeah they're they're doing really well so they did a good, great job on that remix we're going to speak a little bit more about your relationship with uh, Trump Sh mm -hmm. Planner. Mm -hmm. uh, but about uh, your music, there is something characteristic. It's your melody. Uh, uh, I've seen uh, someone spoke about some melancholy expressed inside. Um, but, you know, um, this last year, some people complained uh, about uh, uh, minimal music, uh, as well as pu uh, public, as well as uh, artists, that uh, it has... Um, it has brought out uh, kind of emotion in the music with too much aesthetic. Uh, your music is completely different. Uh, did you have sometimes some discussion about it with friends uh, about about this uh, this fact with minimal? Um, do you mean are you talking about when minimal gets really boring? Is that what yeah, you were trying yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah, yeah um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I've discussed it with friends that much, um, but. It definitely did get, I mean, in some ways minimal, you know, in a lot of ways, some people call my music minimal, you know? I don't think it is, but some people call it that. It depends what you compare it to, you know? If you're used to listening to like crazy electro house, then what I do does sound like minimal. But if you're same, but at the same time, if you're used to listening to what was the really minimal sort of techno five years ago, then you wouldn't call my, my music definitely isn't minimal. It depends where you're coming from. Uh, but for sure, I think it did, it, it's a great thing, you know. The, you know, minimal is a great thing, and it, but it did get taken to the extreme, and it went yeah. too far, and it got got really boring. And I think it was never supposed to be done in a way that got completely boring. It was minimal. Yeah, less is more. Still, still applies. You know, the 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 bottom line is if you 
if you go to a club and they're playing every tune is massive and every tune is a massive banger after half an hour or after three or four tracks you get bored because just like oh it's another massive tune you know they lose the impact you need the contrast between the chilled bits and the, the noisy bits and whatever to actually make the impact so in that sense minimal's great as long as it's not super minimal all night um, and I never I don't I think when it was originally sort of done it wasn't it it, we did have that in mind, it did have progression, it wasn't all, you know, taken down all night, so, um, like anything, like every genre, there's good you know, good points and bad points, um, but, yeah. Yeah, but when people complain about this minimal, it was because of the extreme in uh, aesthetic, yeah. rather than in emotion, and with your music, there's a lot of melody, so we cannot really say yeah. that it's boring, so. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, it's the same as anything. Anything taken, more or less, anything taken to the extreme, you know, is any idealism that's taken to the extreme outside of music as well, you know, as we know, like, religious idealism, for example. It's like, religion can be a great thing, but whenever it's taken to an extreme, it's it's not a good thing in general. And I, I, the same applies with music, you know. It's, it thinks that you need some moderation and some common sense, basically. You can't just have an ideal and, you know, ignore everything else. You need some common sense as well as an ideal, and then you need to know know when to actually draw the line and actually change things. You spoke to us, uh, you know, half of the record, uh, but uh, sometimes you're recording some noise uh, in the wood with your with your phone. Yeah, yeah. This is a new thing. Um, this is my. This is part of my new approach. My sort of te being trying to be you know experimenting and trying new things. And part of my new approach is. I've been out recording lots, doing lots of field recordings, like in the forest or at the beach and in the city, in the pub, in the club, whatever. Ambient noise, I've been recording loads of ambient noise. Um, I'm building up a big bank of it, a big, um, yeah, a big bank of recordings of real sounds. And I'm going to try and, well, I'm, I'm bringing them in to, the, to my music and I'm trying to give it more of an organic feel, I guess. Um, because that's the other thing, my music in the past has always been super digital. I've always, I've relied heavily on, I don't use any analog material, anything analog, it's all digital, you know, soft synths and all my processing, my mastering, everything is super digital. And it gives my, my tracks have that very clean sort of sound because of it. But um, again, I'm, I think I'm, I want to experiment with bringing in more of a, a bit more grit, a bit more natural grit into everything and trying to like, um, yeah, just to see where that takes me, because it'll give me fresh ideas and fresh angles to approach things on, and hopefully some interesting results. Uh, you spoke about your production being digital. Uh, you don't use any machines, just uh, softwares? Yeah, just 100% software. Um, even the, all I've got in my studio is good monitors, a computer, and I've got a couple of MIDI controllers, like MIDI keyboard and an APC40 MIDI controller. And that's it. I just. Um, and then acoustic tree. I mean, I put up, I, most of my money and my work I put, I've put into it has been getting the acoustics and the sound quality as, as good I, as best I can. Um, I, I've put my effort mainly into that side of things rather than into the, you know, buying synths and you know, analog gear. I mean, I'd love to buy some synths and analog gear, but um, I haven't gone down that route yet. So, but I think I think I, it's about time. I, I think I should do because that's. I mean, the one interesting thing is that. Um, because I've not had any analog synths uh, and any sort of, yeah, I haven't relied so much on big synth sort of riffs and which in some ways makes my music a bit less accessible because people love a big synth riff uh, and if you do it sort of digitally it oftentimes a bit cheap whereas the analogs, you know, you, uh, analog synths if you've got a nice one you can do something quite simple and it has an edge of classiness to it and you can actually get away with a what is quite a simple big synth riff but it still has an air of classiness and sort of it's an air of quality whereas if you do the same digitally a lot of the time it comes out something about a bit cheap um, so as a result I've I've heavily relied on loads of digital effects and loads of like detail and clicks and glitchiness and but that's sort of given me my sound so the fact that I haven't gone down the analog route has actually pushed me in a different direction which has actually been useful because it's actually given me I guess what is you know identifiably is my sound these days is with that sort of clicks and details and sort of 
more effects than you should have in any track, you know, just overdoing the effects. But I, I love, you know, effects and details and complexity. I can never have enough of it. But I've gone down that route because of because I've been forced to, well, in some ways, all been almost been forced to because I only have digital stuff. So I was like, okay, I've only got digital. Well, I'm going to take digital as far as I can push it, you know, and really, um, yeah.